right guys, how's it going? So last video, I know I told you guys that I had more parts on order for my car. And this video, I want to elaborate on that a little bit. I want to talk about the parts that I have on order so that I can throw it on my car before I head back for that new dyno tune I'm going to put on since my phase lock install that I did over the winter. But for a quick recap on those of you who are new subscribers, new to my channel, or you just can't totally remember what was going on with my car at the time or where we are right now, here's a really quick up to speed. Okay, so last year with my car with a CompCams HRT Stage 2 cam and a set of Stainless Works long tube headers, we put down 401 horsepower and 403 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheels of my car. Now, also, when we went in and did the dyno tune in the graph, we noted that there was a big flat spot on top of the graph, which we've talked about many times. Uh, there was a restriction there. Now, my tuner, Chris, recommended that we throw on a phase lock because he had to lock out VVT in order to tune my, my, <laughs> my guitar, in order to tune my car because he couldn't access the neural network with VVT turned on Looks like it was kind of a quirk with the 09 and 10 cars, but regardless, he recommended that I throw on a phase lock. That was likely a cause of restriction in the upper register of my RPM on that graph. So we're losing out on power there. Yeah. Okay, so now that we're all on the same page, I wanted to talk about this. Last year, I was browsing through the Motor Trend channel, and if you guys haven't checked out their Engine Masters series, I highly, highly recommend checking it out. It is excellent information. It is three very popular car personalities, guys that a lot of the car communities knows, uh, and basically they test myths. They test different performance myths, uh, for example, whether or not your fan plays a role in how much horsepower you lose or gain by changing to different styles of fans. So we're talking about older carbureted ones uh, that don't have electric fans. Uh, whether or not your headers, if they're dented, how much horsepower you would lose on that. Uh, how much nitrous you can throw at a small block 305 <laughs> and see before it blows up. Uh, lots of really cool myths that they end up testing. Uh, comparisons and stuff for a lot of common car myths and they actually prove a lot of things that you wouldn't think otherwise. Super interesting, very very well done. I highly recommend you guys check out their channel and that series because those guys know what they're doing and they put out really good stuff. Uh, a lot of good info for those of us looking to modify our cars, maybe add a little bit extra horsepower but we want to do it the right way without spending a lot of needless money on things that aren't going to get us there. So last year I came across this video that they did that was a two and a half inch exhaust versus a three inch exhaust. Now in their test, they used the exact same size mufflers, same dimensions, same lengths, same manufacturers, same design. Uh, only difference was one was a three inch, one was a two and a half inch. Uh, and they ran two and a half inch pipe, which would have been the length of roughly a truck Kind of deal so it was a full exhaust system they did in the engine dyno bay so that they could get some really good comparison numbers on what the difference would be between the two systems now the engine that they were running with which was their test mule was a 600 and change horsepower big block chevy uh, just for the baseline i think they did with just a collector and headers they did about 620 or so horsepower somewhere in that range anyways the results they got were pretty interesting the three inch exhaust put out an extra 13 horsepower and 15 or 16 pound feet of torque over the two and a half inch exhaust system uh, now we all know that obviously usually the first step that people take when they modify an engine is doing a cat back exhaust especially on newer cars that's like one of the first routes you take and as you guys also know i generally absolutely do not recommend that guys go out and spend money on a cat back exhaust if you were looking for performance for your car if you want the the added extra sound uh absolutely by all means go for it sound is a big part of the hemi experience totally get that um, now the reason that i don't recommend that guys do that is simply because it, the 
amount of performance you get for the price you pay is not great. And a lot of guys with otherwise stock cars just throwing on a cat back exhaust, most cases guys don't really see any gains. I remember way back, I started joining the Challenger forums back in 2009 when I got my car. And guys were super eager with the new platform and the new Challenger to get out there and try to modify it. And the first thing they do is throw on a cat bag exhaust and a cold air intake. And they would go out to the drag strip with that new combo, super excited to see what kind of improvement they can make on their ETs. And they found no difference. <laughs> they made no extra power. Uh, same thing, they take it to a dyno, check it out. Let's check out, see what kind of power we can make and improve with our 5.7 Hemis. And they made pretty much no extra power especially with the cold air intake. Uh, most guys with the catback exhaust really didn't see much for gains in power, which is one reason why I don't recommend that if you're looking for one of your first few mods for your car and you're looking for that extra power, extra performance, that's not really the best way to go unless you're only looking for sound. Now, having said that, when I was at the dyno tune last year with my tuner, Chris, he did ask me what kind of exhaust I had on the car, what the diameter was, because he was wondering if there was a chance that there was some restriction in the exhaust. He was asking if I had a three inch exhaust, which I didn't. So although we think that most of our restriction issue is to do with that tune and the phase limiter and not being able to access neural network without turning VVT off when we were tuning, uh, although we know that that is an issue with us, I did kind of want to test this myth a little bit and throw on a three inch exhaust onto the car. Now, I'm pretty hesitant to do it for a couple reasons. One, because it costs a fair bit for a nice setup. I ended up ordering the Stainless Works three inch exhaust system. The reason I went with Stainless Works, one, because I really enjoyed their product with the headers. It was a super, super well-fitting, well-made product uh, that was excellent, easy install, and it's a great product. So I have no problem supporting them again. Uh, number two, it's a three inch system all the way back. Uh, and you can pick the style of mufflers you get. Uh, I went a straight through uh, glass pack kind of design uh, rather than a chambered muffler, simply because I don't want the restriction. And I've heard from a few people that a chambered muffler doesn't sound that great uh, with some applications, depending on if you have an X pipe or an H pipe or what the deal is. Sometimes it doesn't sound the best. So having said that, I was a little bit hesitant because the price and the sound level. Now I'm all for a great sounding V8 car. I love my car and I love the way it sounds. Uh, after I installed the cam, you guys know that I've got headers going straight into the stock cat back. Um, it really upped the volume on the overall sound of the car to the point that it sounds excellent right now. It sounds really good. It's pretty loud. It's got a really deep rumble. It's, it's almost like an ideal sound for me and a decent sound level. Like it's loud, but it's not like blow your face off loud. Uh, if you've seen some of the other channels out there, like my good buddy, Donnie RT, who when he did his HRT cam install on his car, he had a boreless setup, I believe, on his car, and when he fired it up for the first time, he was almost blown away with, holy crap, this is way, way louder than it was before. So, although I definitely don't mind the sound of my car and the beautiful V8 noises that that 5.7 produces, I don't want it to be definitely loud inside the cab of the car, which it might not be, but I was a little hesitant to order the system just because it already sounded right how I wanted to, and it's kind of tough to stray from that when you got a good sound going with your setup. So that is the reason that I decided to go with a Stainless Works three inch exhaust with Turbo S type mufflers, like more of a straight through design rather than a chambered design. Uh, decided I'd bite the bullet on it and get that on the car before I head back to the dyno, just because if there's even a chance that say there is an extra 10 horsepower, like not very much, but an extra 10 horsepower to the wheels waiting by switching to a three inch exhaust. I know in the engine masters episode, they had a 600 and change horsepower application. So it's not quite the same because we're putting, we'd be putting out about 460 or so if it was straight to an engine dyno like they had. Um, it's not quite the same, but at the same point, you've got to think that it's got to put out at least 
at least a little bit extra power. So I'm hoping for an extra maybe 10 horsepower out of it. Hoping that that phase lock unlocks a little bit extra horsepower. We get that flat spot out of the curve, get a nice even torque and power curve and pick up that extra horsepower that we were missing. That's going to throw us, I'm hoping for around that 420 range. That is what I feel that this setup should be able to make all day long with this cam. If you guys do follow my man, Donnie RT, he released his power numbers and they were excellent with this cam setup. Uh, his setup's not all that different than mine. But anyways, guys, I wanted to give you an update and that's where we're sitting with the car now. I'm literally waiting for that exhaust system to get here and it feels like it is taking its sweet time. I was hoping to give you guys an unboxing video when I revealed all of this, but I still don't have any notification of it being delivered within the next couple days. So I figured, why not? Let's just sit down and talk about it and uh, let you guys know what's going on so that uh, we can keep you updated when I get that part in. I'll definitely have an install video and then uh, we'll head back to the dyno, go back to retune it and see what kind of power we can make with that. Obviously, if you guys are new to my channel, uh, the goal that I have when I initially set out for my car was just to be able to put out a 6.4 Hemi kind of power output level with my 5.7 with as few mods as possible. I was really trying to get to that 485-ish horsepower kind of range that these cars really seem to be the sweet spot for them. It really seems to be the sweet spot for this platform for just a really fun daily driver and take it to the strip on the weekends kind of setup. You can really do anything with it kind of kind of setup for these cars. So that was my goal when I initially set out and I'm so close to being there and I feel like this will likely put me over the top. Thank you guys so much for following me along on this journey. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you guys have any comments or anything yourselves, just leave them down below. You guys know I like chatting with everybody, uh, talking about your guys' setups, what you guys have done to your cars, all that kind of stuff. And in the meantime, guys, uh, that's all for today. And I'll talk to you guys later when I've got that exhaust in and we'll be throwing it on the car. Peace.